you know, create a research program so that we can put that into some sort of viable market without having to just compost it. Um, I mean, there's ways of turning it into, um, into like biochar, um, that could be a possibility for it, but why not, you know, take the floral material and actually research it? You know, what, what, what do terpenes change? Do the cannabinoids ratios change? At what point, what impact does, does it make? Down by um, Menden, Michigan is where it is. Wow. And Fabio might even make a surprise visit in here. So we'll see. All that. right. We are live on the IHEMP Hour. Welcome to the IHEMP Hour. My name is Dave Crable. I'm with IHEMP Michigan. IHEMP Michigan's mission is to educate, inform, and promote the research, development, and cultivation of industrial hemp in Michigan. IHEMP Michigan advocates for wellness and people on the planet through hemp, and it begins with the farmer. Please support our advocacy and join IHEP Michigan. We have, uh, the expo is going to be launching. We're going to talk, I'm sure Blaine, you're going to touch on that this uh, weekend. So uh, make sure you're getting our emails. We have some great things coming ahead. Uh, before we get to that, uh, Mike, on the other side of the point three, you want to bring us up to date on uh, the cannabis news? Yeah, there was uh, something breaking yesterday that uh, is going to affect everybody in both sides, both sides of the point three. Uh, but uh, the U.S. Senate Appropriations Committee approved an amendment Wednesday meant to let military veterans get medical marijuana because the VA is they won't let you do that. Or they haven't been letting people do that. And instead, they flood them with a bunch of opioids and all these other prescription drugs. Uh, now, uh, I, I, amendment still has to get through all the process and everything, but it, it, I, I know a lot of veterans that we talk to, of course, we're involved in the hero project, which supports veterans. Um, and that's been a big bugaboo for them is they don't want to take the pharmaceutical drugs anymore. They want to be able to take medical marijuana, CBD, things like that. And the veterans administration has been getting in the way. So hopefully that will be dealt with shortly. Uh, the other thing that we covered uh, my show yesterday on 420 Post was the MRA, Michigan Ma Michigan Marijuana Regulatory Association, has come out with new guidelines for edibles. So there's been some issues with, uh, I don't know if there's actually been that many issues, but there's been some folks that are calling poison control because the little kitties have been eating the various edibles that mom and dad may have left out in the open. And the kids being kids, they think they're candy, right? And they're not. Uh, so... Uh, new labeling requirements, uh, you, they're going to make companies that have fanciful logos with the cute little animals, they can't use those anymore. Uh, oh. They're going to make them make a bunch of changes, uh, label it THC product, that sort of thing. Um, but kind of gets back to, you know, mom and dad is leaving that stuff out. It's not really, shouldn't fall on the industry to take the hit for this because it's going to cost a lot of people a lot of money to change their labeling. But... You know, I understand being a parent myself because my kids are a lot older uh, than that. But uh, that's one of the big things out there. And it's, gonna, it's big changes that's going to rippling through the economy. Now, the thing is that they're not going to enforce it till February. A lot of these companies have spent a lot of money on packaging. So that gives them six months to kind of go through all that packaging and, and then line up new packaging that will have all the various uh, labels and THC labels and things like that on there. So uh, interesting news. Uh, uh, we had some folks on the show yesterday that, you know, and, and some of this stuff's been around for a while. They just haven't enforced it. Well, now they're enforcing it. So uh, there you go. It's kind of an interesting story, I think. Yeah, it's good that, you know, it, it makes sense, you know, that it should be clearly labeled so it's not improperly ingested. Yeah, because you got gummies, you got cookies, you got all this stuff. And to a kid, you know, especially if they're, you know, under 10 or something, they yeah, really don't know what's going on. To them, it's a gummy, it's a cookie. They don't know that there's other stuff in there, right? Mm -hmm. So, well, People got to make sure they take care of that stuff, that's for sure. You know? Yeah, the point was made, hey, if you got guns, you store those. And if you got alcohol, you lock that up. And so part of it is just, you know, parents, you can't leave that stuff out. It'd be stupid if you got young kids because their kids are kids, right? You know, so, but state is stepping in, make you change your packaging. Uh, old guys can be kids too, right? Yeah. Oh, take that. Go ahead and take that call, Dave. So, uh, <laughs> oops. That's, 20, that's $5 to the kitty every time that happens. Oh, man. Yeah. 
So there you have it. Those are the two oh, hot stories from the, the dark side of the cannabis plant. Thank so you. So I got a, an interesting uh, story to add to you, Mike, and we'll probably want to do this on your show real soon. But so there was a um, an edict that came out uh, August the 3rd from the MRA regarding um, people that are selling uh, plant material like clones. and. Oh, yeah, that came up, too. Yeah. So what that's happened is now. Uh, remember, we've always talked about this food safety and all this stuff. So now those people have to have a uh, good manufacturing practice and a good uh, agricultural handling practice certificate in order to that they can then sell their material. And then once they get that certificate, then they got to send that to the MRA and they've got to prove it. This is way too much regulation and overstepping, but that's what's got to happen. So, Mike, uh, maybe we'll have a show in the near future and I can explain what has to happen. I got two phone calls yesterday and the clients picked up two new clients because they got to get that done. So Yeah, yeah. We had Scott Roberts on, a cannabis attorney. He talked a little bit about that, but it'd probably be a good idea to get it from the hemp side as well. So uh, we'll, we'll book you here sometime in August, uh, Blaine, and you can bring your buddy Dave on maybe too. I don't know. Uh, as long as he doesn't you know, have phone calls during the middle of the show or anything, we're okay. So, Mike, who you got on next week? Um, we're kind of looking at a couple of things for next week. It's uh, Black Entrepreneurs Month, and there's some black cannabis entrepreneurs that we may feature on the show. Although we've had the number on previously, but August, for some reason, has been designated that way. So we're taking a look at that. And there's a couple other things we're looking at. Um, I try to keep it as topical as uh, and current as I can. That's why we picked that new MRA thing that, that just came out on Monday uh, mm -hmm. regarding the uh, packaging for the edibles. Uh, so sometimes we change our mind. I mean, we got something planned, but then something better comes along. So right now, tentatively, that would be what we're going to have for next week. Okay. Super. Super. Well, uh, this week, uh, it's uh, like kind of like, where's Waldo? Where's Blaine this week? Uh, I apologize for not being able to be on the show last week, but uh, technical error and uh, error on my part more than anything else on that situation. So, however, I have learned how to use my phone much better now after that event. So You know how to turn it off now again. I do. Yeah. 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 Attaboy. <laughs> I just could have done that. It would have fixed it all on its own. So, but uh, anyway, so, but I did listen to the show uh, when I could and it was, and I did replay it. What a great show it was last week, Dave. You did an awesome job. So uh, Kayla just, she was, I, I, we need to bring her in again. You know, she was okay. awesome. All right. So I want to give a little shout out to uh, my mobile mom office today. Uh, we're down in, uh, I'm going to butcher this name probably bad, but Le Leonidas, Michigan is where I'm at. I am broadcasting from uh, uh, Kent uh, Fieldman's. Um, facility here. He uh, has been in the fertilizer, let's say a nutrient business for over 30 years. And they have a, a product that he makes down here. It's called RTG Micro Provide. I'm going to give a little picture of the bag here for that. Just mm -hmm. a little shout out to him. Uh, so I'll read a little bit about what this product does. If I can find my sheet that I have. Here's my sheet. So ready to grow is what RTG stands for. And MicroProvide delivers unparalleled crop micro synergy. MicroProvide introduces uh, proven mi microbial strains, fungi, and proprietary seaweed, the most active marine plant used in agriculture, into the soil to unlock critical nutrition. The resulting synergy creates a strong and healthy crop and robust uh, beneficial life to deliver maximum yields. So we'll uh, we'll probably get this up on the site that people can look at. And uh, again, I want to say it's RTG. It is micro provide. So uh, Kent, we thank you very much for allowing me to uh, visit and be able to broadcast from here. So um, one of the things coming up, we'll talk more about the expo, like you said, David, a little at the end of the show. But we want to let everybody know some things that are going on. So next Saturday, the fourteenth, is our uh, our August uh, hemp working event. It's going to be a, a week from this Saturday. A week from this Saturday. I say this Saturday. I'm sorry. A week from the 14th. Okay, we're going to do that. Uh, we'll get the information up on there. We're probably going to start in uh, Midland and wind up down in Birch Run uh, at the end of the thing. So uh, great. We're going to have uh, six different stops we're going to do. We're going to do a greenhouse. We're going to do a, a, um, a retail store. Uh, we're going to go to a farm that does uh, hemp uh, grain. Uh, we're going to stop at a CBD grow. And then we're going to wind up down a Birch Run at another really nice store down there. 
that we're going to go to. So we're looking forward to do that. Uh, get your friends along. Uh, it's going to be a road rally. So what happens is every stop, you're going to get a playing card. Then at the end of the event, uh, whoever has the best uh, poker hand uh, wins and also gets a little prize. But everybody's going to get something along the way. So please come out and join us for that. It'll be a fun little kind of event on that day. So uh, Southern Hemp Expo is coming up um, September 2nd through the 4th. We are going to be down there. Uh, we have a booth down there. We're also going to be throwing a little hospitality night. Um, so if anybody wants to join in on the fun, let us know. We can kind of caravan down. We're kind of getting all that figured out to go down and do that. Um, but it's going to be a very fun time. And if you want to come down and think, well, God, I'd like to come down and do something. Well, Southern Hemp Expo is looking for volunteers as well. So kind of a little free pass to get into some of the events as well on that. If you want to volunteer a little bit of your time, they can sure use that. So uh, Monday, August 30th is going to be the Midwest Hemp Council's Indiana Farmers Union uh, Fiber Forum and Field Day. That's going to be in Martinsville, Indiana. We've got information on the website on that. Coming up on that. So let's see what else we got here. Uh, yeah, and on iHempMichigan.com, we... Uh, if you look at hemp events, there's a calendar there. So we're updating that as frequently as possible. It's all uh, a calendar of events. Hemp at the Crossroads, of course, is December 1 through 3 in Plainfield, Indiana. More information on that will be there also. Also, September 10th and 11th is the West Michigan Cannabis and Hemp Expo at the Deltaplex in Grand Rapids. We're going to be having a booth there. So... If you're over in that area, do stop over and say hi to us. We could use a little help. If you want to volunteer, let us know. Uh, you can get into the show free. And you can give us a little help with the run of the booth there for that. So uh, a little shout out to um, Heartland Industries. Uh, I don't know if you saw this or not, Dave, but uh, they won the Innovation Challenge for Sustainable Material Solutions and Manufacturing from Continental Tire. So yep. shout, out, shout out to them. Nice way to go, guys, on that one, that's for sure. I'm going to hang out with those guys this afternoon. Are you really? And eat huh? some Thai food. I'm excited. Can't Ooh. wait. Okay. Uh, uh, Michigan Farm Agriculture put out a, uh, an email. Uh, MDAR begins industrial hemp grower compliance inspections. So uh, I highly suggest it's dated August 2nd. I highly suggest you look over that if you're growing this year. Uh, they're going to be calling you, and, uh, and about 10%, I think, of the growers are going to probably get inspected. There's a list of things that you need to be able to provide them, uh, records you need to keep. Uh, so please uh, do take your time. Everybody that's growing out there, take your time. Make sure you read over this and have this with stuff available for them. Um, so and make sure you got your signs out. If you haven't done that, that's a real important one. We don't want to have people getting called on the police. Um, real interesting uh, uh, on the uh, sustainability now uh, tonight. Uh, their topic is the science of cannabis as medicine. So we sure get to see that. That's at 7 p.m. Tammy Sweet is the author and educator that's going to be on there. And the other information, Dave, I'm going to save to the end of the show. Um, but we want to let everybody know that they're looking for ditch weed. Now that'll, that'll be the teaser. Yeah, that's right. That at the end of the show. So. Furled cannabis. Yeah, yeah. All you guys have got a little little patch out there. You've been kind of saving for yourself. You know, you need to now. You can share it and you can get some information on it. So, but uh, it was my pleasure uh, to uh, meet Annie Rouse uh, out in Colorado for the uh, U.S. Hemp Roundtable meeting. Um, my wife is a fan. She's a groupie. So when she saw Annie, she just kind of went bonkers and. So, uh, yeah, so you got to, so you, so you got to group you there, Annie, you got to watch it next time we meet <laughs> in Washington, I'll try to hold her back, you know, she's probably going to want your autograph and all that good stuff. Um, but Annie uh, Rouse is a dedicated hemp entrepreneur, educator, and activist who has spent the last 10 years building a sustainable supply chain for hemp products through her manufacturing and formulation entity, OP Innovates. Her suite of uh, branded products include Overcome, Nature's Hemp Oil, Hemp Mellow, and Alivia Health. If I said that name, Anavi. Uh, does that great? Did I? Sometimes I butcher names. Anavi. <laughs> it's a word that we made up. It's okay. Anavi. <laughs> Anavi. I, that's a cool name to make up. I like that name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it means kind of people. Kind of people. Be kind. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Excellent. Uh, Annie earned a uh, U.S. Fulbright scholarship to study the environmental life cycle of the Canada hemp 
Supply Chain, received her BS in Economics and a Master's in International Environmental Policy and an MBA in her MBA. In her free time, which I cannot believe she has any, Annie is the writer and producer of her podcast series, Anslinger, The Untold Cannabis Conspiracy, an interview narration style podcast highlighting Big Pharma's role in cannabis prohibition analyzed from 10 years of archival research. She is also the founder and board member of Friends of Hemp, a nonprofit advancing the value of hemp by engaging our communities. She serves on the board of directors to the Hemp Industry Association, U.S. Hemp Authority, and U.S. Hemp Roundtable. Uh, to explore more about Annie and her journey, visit her blog, Think Hempy Thoughts. Annie, we are just awesome that you can take some time out of your schedule to share with us and be on our show today. So thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. So one of the things that we uh, talked about a little bit when we were out in Colorado, and you have a good opinion on this, or, or an opinion, let's put it that way, is this uh, 1% that we all want to go to for hemp. So thought maybe we'd start down that path and see where it leads us. So, Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of people out there are, are pushing the 1% THC, uh, total THC, or even Delta 9 THC in some instances for hemp. And um, I think a lot of people initially were trying it because they figured that it would protect the farmer. Um, and while that is the case, um, the issue was really resolved in the USDA's uh, final rule because they increased the limit to 1% for you know, actual legal action against someone as, as though it's a, a mistake. Um, if we really push into the commercialization, legalization of one up to levels of 1% and then the commercialization, it, I don't think people have really thought about the unintended, unintended consequences of it all. So 1% THC, means that it's 10 milligrams per gram of THC. So if you are looking at a traditional um, hemp cigarette or you know even a joint, should be even even more weight, that that joint or cigarette is somewhere between like seven grams and, and 10, or no, sorry, 0.7 grams and one gram. So you would be getting in one cigarette or joint about 10 milligrams of Delta 9 THC, which is, you know, in most states like Colorado, um, that's the legal dose of a gummy, um, of an actual edible. Um, and a lot of states, you know, Michigan, I'm, I'm sure if, if they don't already have levels that at, uh, you know, the max amount per serving, it probably would end up covering around that, that yeah, 10, 10 milligram mark. So, yeah. yeah, so like Illinois doesn't have that. I'm sure they're going to end up working towards it because there's there's issues when people take too much. Um, but, you know, that, that's a lot of, of THC to be pushing into a legal hemp product that's supposed to be considered a supplement. Now, that doesn't mean that everybody, you know, is necessarily going to put a 1% into uh, cigarettes or, or the like, since that market has fairly, um, not really actively been pursued to the degree of like cigarettes are, um, or cannabis you know, THC derived from cannabis. Um, but then when you look at the formulation side, what happens is you have now a flower that's higher in THC. It's also a lot higher in CBD. Um, but then when it comes down to formulation, if the end product is still at 0.3% or, you know, new regulations come out in the future to figure out a serving size or, or whatever it might be, you now have a more difficult time formulating because you have higher concentrations of THC. So you have to dilute it more to get below that 0.3% threshold. So it becomes more challenging on the formulation front as well. Um, and then, you know, you look at the production side of it and the resources that are spent really coming after, you know, trying to get a law changed. I mean, how long did it take to get him, <laughs> you know, taken for off the Controlled Substances Act? My God, long time. Uh, 1970 to, you know, 2014. Whoa, uh, that's a lot of time. That's a lot of resources. And we all know how, um, how slow government is working right now. So we take all of our time to spend our resources on changing this law. Well, in the meantime, we could be spending that money on growing the actual hemp market. Because by the time that law would probably pass, you'd have the grain market growing. And once that grain market, you know, protein markets are skyrocketing right now, plant-based proteins. Once that grain market really kicks off and the fiber market comes after it, um, 
grain is going to start just completely pollinating these CBD rich hemp fields. So then it'd be hard enough even just to try and get to that 1% THC that you've been trying so hard to legalize after all these years. Um, and so it just, it really, I think it's a waste of resources. I think that there's plenty of product right now. I mean, we've, we've seen a completely flush market and oversupply. That's also going to create less, you know, you raise that to 1%, you need less extract. You need less extract, you need less raw material. Well, that doesn't help the farmer. That means that there'll be, you know, five farmers growing it across the United States and that'll be that. That's not what uh, this industry was really set out to try and do. So wow. with all of those kinds of looking at the really the big picture um, and not just the now, I think is really important um, on a very pressing topic that's got really two sides of, of, uh, of sway behind it. You know, it's pretty interesting. I never thought about the, the end product, you know, the end use of this and mm -hmm. the programs and what's in it. I never thought about that part. Of yeah, it. that's my mind's kind of blown right now, Annie. That's I can see why Becky's a groupie because, you know, have you <laughs> written anything up about this? You know, because you know, no one's the one percent. Yeah, and the one um, percent, you know, I, I've, I've never heard this argument before. Yeah, so I've had this is my third interview on it. I um, one of my business partners and I did like a, um, an episode on it for a radio show that was short lived. Um, Think Empty Thoughts. You can find it on our on my on thinkempthoughts.com. So we did like a just a back and forth on the topic, um, and then Pan Exchange uh, did an interview, and I think the transcript of that is online somewhere. Um, actually, I think only the transcript is online. Um, and then, you know, sharing it with you all. Excellent. All right. And then I, when I talk to people, I, you know, obviously I've been sharing it in a one-to-one -one mode. But. Yeah, no, I'll write something up and get it on. on uh, I have Michigan. It, it, math is, my son's the math genius, not me, but uh, that makes right. sense. I mean, you, you know, 1%. We, we just think of it in the flower. You know, it's like you go over that point three. I mean, that's a risk. We want to eliminate risk, but there's the flip side to that. That is oh, yeah. Well, and the wow. USDA already mitigated that risk. You know, the, those final rules, they say you can go up to 1% without any sort of legal action. Well, if you're trying to hit 0.3% and you accidentally hit 1%, you're not very good at growing hemp. <laughs> or, yeah, you know, or, you, or you got sold like, some bad seed. Or yeah, or you got sold some yeah. bad seeds. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors. Mm. I, I shouldn't quite say that because there's a ton of factors at play there. Usually it is falls back to the seed. Someone gave you something they said was hemp and it wasn't because there's not much certified seed on the market. But, you know, it's one of those things where it it's not a, it's not as much of a common occurrence as what it used to be. And even when it used to be, it was people were hitting 0. 0.6, you know, every now and then someone would get like, whoa, that was way wrong. Um, but that's kind of worked itself out with, with what the USDA has done. And I, I haven't dug deep, too deep into those rules. Like hopefully it's a three strikes you're out kind of system um, as we get genetics working in place and get certified yeah. seeds and, and whatnot. But, um, you know, as that time progresses, again, certified seeds take probably about as long as government takes to do anything. Yeah. So, you know, you'll be working those in, in parallel with one another. But I just ultimately think that at the end of the day, it's a waste of resources. Oh, that's Because the hemp industry needs so much. So if you take the money that we could be spending on lobbying, you know, every state and all the governments on that, and instead we put that into, you know, growing the fiber industry, creating a, a marketing campaign to normalize hemp, creating... Um, you know, pushing it into the animal feed sectors to grow those markets. Um, you know, there's just so many other things that I would I would do with with that money that would benefit the industry much more than than a one percent argument. You know, you made a good point um, about when the grain takes over and people start growing grain. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you're right. It's gonna. It's just. What oh, I, yeah. What's going to be interesting there is going to be because here in Michigan we have recreational as well as medical, mm -hmm. and they're doing the outdoor grows, and uh, you know, not going to be a pretty sight. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I mean, yeah. cannabis. Uh, that that's why Humboldt banned hemp. Yeah. So now you you can't grow that here. Mm -hmm. We're a cannabis country. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, over time, I mean, that's if you look back historically at what cannabis was and hemp was. Um, in Kentucky and what pharmaceutical companies were using, they weren't growing it like we grow it now. 
they were actually growing it for the fiber and they were just cutting the flowering tops like they do in Europe and pushing that through into extracts and then into final products. Um, and so, you know, that's partially because grain and fiber were massive back then, you know, it, it, it just took over and then the birds come in and they, you know, grab a bunch of the seeds and they fly off and then that starts growing and then, <laughs> you know, it's ditch weed all over again. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's hard to eradicate it once it starts going. And I mean, you could have, you know, a farm a hundred miles away from you and each summer it might creep 10 miles closer <laughs> and uh, you know, yeah. the pollen goes, goes a distance and um, yeah, it'll eventually, I mean, it'll take some time for that problem to arise. Um, but as, as the grain industry really presses forward, especially as something like animal feed, you know, using the grain becomes legal, like with chicken feed and, and whatnot. I mean, that'll be a massive push into the grain market. Um, that'll really disrupt a lot of the production uh, methods that we use today. So is, wasn't there some poultry tests being, I know you, you were on the board with the Hemp Feed Coalition with Hunter Buffington. Yeah, and... yeah. So I um, I served on the steering committee. I'm no, I'm no longer on it, but I, you know, I'm at an event right now and I'm telling people left and right, join this, like animal yeah. feed, we need it. Are you at the, um, Kentucky, uh, the Kentucky hemp yeah. thing? Oh, yeah. I am, yes um yeah so shout out to kentucky hemp yeah. association um and uh yeah they just i think they either started or maybe they just finished they're somewhere in the process of doing a boiler chicken study um to analyze you know the the life cycle of it when you when you're looking at chicken or when you're looking at at making so hemp because it was taken out of the supply chain so long ago um there was regulations that were implemented in the 50s for animal feeds. And since then, um, because hemp wasn't in the supply chain then, um, it's not considered like, it's now considered a new animal feed. Um, so you have to go through all of these approval processes to make sure it's safe. Even though, you know, I have an article from 1933 that's like, this is low germination hemp seed, not great for growing, why don't you feed it to your poultry? Um, you know, this used to be part of our supply chain. It's probably why we have an endocannabinoid system today. Um, but the chicken, actually hemp seeds have um, an amino acid in it called methionine, methionone, methionine, I don't know, something like that. And uh, it actually helps chickens lay eggs regularly. Hmm. And hemp seed is like the most efficient at producing this amino acid. And it's not well found in other um, other plant materials. Right now, the chicken industry is using a synthetic version of methionine and pumping that into chickens to get them to lay eggs. It's like, what? This is so dumb. <laughs> um, so the one of the studies that they're doing um, that I'm aware of, and I'm sure they could talk about, about this a little bit more in detail, but um, it was looking at you know the safety of the toxicology. You've got to go mm -hmm. through all those trials, especially with something that we eat, which are considered production animals, you have to look at the life cycle, not just like a 90 day study. you got to think about, okay, the egg, okay, now it's a chicken. Now, you know, what is the bioaccumulation of um, probably mostly what they're looking at is THC um, to then see, well, when, when we eat it, is that, okay, what's that going to do to the body? It's yeah, like, well, we kind of know. Another two things. years, you think? I don't know. Um, that's, uh, I don't, that's what I, I keep know hearing. It's going to be Okay. Yeah. So then probably I have, I don't have like a recent update it, update on it, but um, I know cows is like a really long time to do right. those studies, Four. but chickens they're you know, um, birth to slaughter is shorter. So um, the time is, you know, cut by that, but it's not like companion animals, dogs, cats, horses, that you only need a 90 day study because we're not eating them. And it, it could be a lot faster if we could use some e European or, uh, you know, yeah. research from other countries, right? But yeah, we're, or if we just, you know, talk about a legislative change. Instead of 1%, let's take those resources, put it into saying, hey, FDA, yeah, this was legal before you even existed. So let's like put it back in the supply chain and be done with it. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. <laughs> like that's going to happen, right? I yeah, think there's right. another three-letter organization that is kind of gummying things up, the DEA. And so, uh, oh, yeah. you know, we need to deal with those folks too, right? Yep. Absolutely. Well, I, 
just made some new uh, hemp oil this last week, uh, hemp seed oil. But this particular oil we're saving and we're making the biofuel out of it, which we've oh, had cool. great results there just so you know, things are coming along nicely there. But I, uh, so I have some of the cake from the seed left over mm -hmm. and having another test done on it and I'll be sending that into Hunter. So she'll be able to add that to the list of material there, so. Yep. Good, good. Yeah, if anyone's uh, out there has some raw materials, definitely contact the Hemp Bee Coalition, and um, you can get samples to them. It helps the research. We have, we have basically have to build a portfolio of, you know, there's all these different varieties, different ways of processing it. So we have to build a portfolio so we can send those in for sampling, so that we have a, you know, a large data set of the variances in the market of different nutrients and. Um, cannabinoids and, and whatnot. Well, probably by the end of in two weeks from now, I'll have about uh, 6,000 pounds of the cake. So oh, gonna, wow. Okay. We have, some, we have some farmers that are interested in feeding it, their, you know, their own animals, not uh -huh. in the marketplace. So um, I got to get a hold of Hunter and we got to figure out how to make that all work so the USDA will accept that information. So absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. So what else is happening in your world? How about what's going on in your world with stuff? Um, yeah, so I, I started OP Innovates with uh, another business partner um, and a couple other individuals. We are primarily focused on uh, manufacturing, a unique delivery system that we've patent, patented, it's patent pending right now. It's called Naturia Plus, and it, it naturally improves bioavailability in the body. We just finished some clinical trials on on uh, the delivery system, comparing our delivery system with CBD uh, to MCT and CBD, which is the most common carrier on the market. Um, found really good results with it. That we'll, we'll be publishing soon. And um, that's we. it's available for private labeling. So that's mainly what we've been putting marketing material together for and, you know, getting kind of starting the pathway to, to push it into the, into the public. Um, we formulated a couple house brands with it. And I've had really good success with some functional formulations and uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, always an evolving adventure. <laughs> What's it called again? MTC oil than what you're using for the carrier for some of that. It's you... called uh, Naturia plus N A T U R I A plus. Okay. Um, and yeah, we did a study. So it's our unique delivery system um, compared to with CBD compared to MCT oil with CBD. Um, oh. Our product was in a dry capsule um, and then the control was in a soft gel. Hmm. So that's available online then to be able to buy now or? Yeah, yeah, so you can buy the product. Actually, we've got um, we've got it available in a couple different brands that are on anavimarket.com. So there's Anavi Relief, which is uh, really good for uh, relief, obviously, by name, <laughs> uh, relief, recovery, um, you know, normal inflammation, normal, quote unquote, FDA. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> what we say there now. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Yep. And um, yep, there you go. So really amazing product, probably, you know, one of the best performing products on the market for for those specific purposes, the CBDA really is um is beneficial it's it's there's research out there that's showcasing its ability as a cox2 inhibitor which inhibits inflammation from really binding to um to receptors in the body or enzymes I'm not a scientist um and uh then we um use our delivery system within that so um super powerful better absorption than your traditional mct soft gel would be and then it's also available in um, another brand called Hemp Mellow, um, which is also on a Navi market. And that's formulated for uh, more for stress, uh, relaxation, uh, normal anxiety. Um, it comes in um, 25 milligram capsule, also has the delivery system in it. Uh, we're about to launch a 90 count bottle. The, um, the, we're, we also have a chocolate that's not available on a Navi yet, but is really powerful. It's got a great uh, ratio of CBD or total cannabinoids to THC, Delta 9 THC. I don't 
really believe in the Delta eight stuff because I don't trust the quality of it. Um, but, uh, it's super powerful for your, um, sleep, you know, normal pain, um, you know, general wellness. Um, do, do you take and, either or, or you take them together yeah, and is it one yeah, capsule can, a day or what exactly? So the, the hemp mellow capsules kind of depends on what you're going for. I mean, if you want more of the relaxation, I always say start with one after a high fat snack, um, and see how you feel. Um, some people, you know, it, hemp mellow is formulated to maximize legal limits of THC. So we have in the capsules, there's one point, a little over 1.5 milligrams of THC per capsule. So depending on how, um, how sensitive you are to Delta nine THC, sometimes one might get you high. <laughs> sometimes two, you're like, okay, I feel very relaxed. So, you know, everybody is different yeah. because everyone's endocannabinoid systems are different. So we always just say, start with one after a meal or a high fat snack and increase from there. Um, the chocolates, I, I always tell people to cut it in half. <laughs> And uh, start from there because it, it is um, quite potent. It's 80 milligrams total cannabinoids um, with nine milligrams of Delta 9 THC. Yeah, I had, uh, my partner had made some chocolates from my, our distillate. Mm -hmm. And I'm walking into the hockey rink to play hockey and he hands me a chocolate. He hands it to me. And then he's talking to somebody else and I ate it. And then he turns you ate the whole thing. <laughs> I missed a couple of shifts. Uh, <laughs> it was a unique experience. I wanted oh, to ask yeah. you on, on your, is this your, is it the extraction? Are you doing a traditional, uh, you know, uh, like a hemp uh, oil extraction distillate? What is that? Mm -hmm. What's different to create your compound? Um, no, it's actually in the formulation process. So we can use Naturia Plus with any um, extract, any um, really any lipophilic or fat loving compound. Um, so even in the like vitamin D space. So actually, if you go to um, the brand Overcome. Um, oh, sorry, you can go in a Navi. Oh, actually. Um, so the brand overcome, if you go over to the, like far right hemp brands. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And then down. Oh, sometimes it doesn't work. I hate. Yeah. Them. I love those nabs. Um, right there. Yep. So our overcome every day. Um, this is actually, um, formulations, my brainchild and, in, in, um, collaboration with our chief science officer and another, um, another scientific advisor that, um, does line. Lyme disease formulation. So I got Lyme disease, um, back in 2013 was, went two years, um, undiagnosed, caught it in 2015 and basically wow. turned to CBD to save my life. Um, oh. and that's actually what drew me into CBD from really being more in the grain and fiber space of hemp. But, um, Oh, the overcome brand I've formulated for my needs and, and the needs of people like me. Um, because you know, some of life's greatest challenges are overcoming every day. <laughs> um, so and you so added this, business, right? looks you know, like, so. yeah, it looks like you added CBG and then you have some vitamin yep. D and vitamin D. Yep. So, um, the vitamin, uh, D3 and, and curcumin, um, also is in it. Those are both lipophilic compounds. So we can maximize the absorption also of the D3, and the um, and the curcumin within within this within Naturia Plus delivery system, um, this product specifically also has B B complex, um, so the full spectrum of, of B vitamins, um, and then also CBD CBGA or CBG and CBDA. Um, so we we like to use a variety of cannabinoids, and um, you know even we'll eventually dabble in the in the legal cannabis space, maybe even in Michigan, actually yeah. talking with some people about that kind of recently. Excellent. They're for, much further along than Kentucky. <laughs> no, yeah. we, uh, we know a lot of people. I run the Michigan marijuana report for 20 posts. And so we're pretty connected. So, uh, you know, message me or email me and, uh, I can help you get into Michigan if you're interested. So, yeah, definitely. I'd love to, I'm, I'm I've got a strong connection with Michigan. So, um, it's a good space. It's my, I'd consider my second home for sure. Yay. Well, we'd love to have you. Well, thank you. This is exciting. Um, this is cool. But it, it contains yeah, milk. Yeah, it's, it's an exciting time. Is that, it uh, does, yeah. 
So yeah, the, the first yeah. ingredient on both of them, I noticed, was cream. That's yep. not what I would expect. I have to put my no. glasses back on cream. Yep. So um, we actually, our um, chief science officer and our, our CEA, who are the oh. um, inventors of the um, of the patent, they um, discovered a molecule found in breast milk um, that was created by Mother Nature as a way for mothers to pass nutrients to their young in an effective manner. Oh. And so we have biomimicked the process of Mother Nature because she is brilliant. And why not? Yeah. Um, and um, there is a um, because of that, there is a, um, a molecule, you know, you have to put an allergen on the if anything contains milk, it has to be on the label as an allergen. It's a zero tolerance policy under the under the FDA. Um, however, we've given our product to lots of people. I'm lactose intolerant myself. We've given it to other people who have actual milk allergens um, from the protein. And it's such a trace amount. It, it has not impacted anybody negatively to date. Oh, wow. Is this sort of that one a day kind of capsule as well or? what um no i mean that so the overcome every day i take it every morning i take two of them um and then in the evenings i'll, I'll take a every night which is um formulated for sleep and sometimes throughout the day or depending on my day i might take a hemp mellow or a cbda um and uh then you know some other products that we've got in the oven that we haven't let loose yet <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, it's been fun formulating with different cannabinoids, just trying them on myself, trying them on other people, seeing how, you know, doing little R and D trials mm -hmm. on friends and family and, and total strangers. <laughs> All right. Well, I, you know, I, you're going to need, you're going to need to enter some of these into the Hempy Awards this year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's a great idea. Mm -hmm. And you can come to Michigan in January where we guarantee it'll be 70 and sunny, at least <laughs> inside the Lansing Center, you know. Yes. So. <laughs> the Radisson, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've been there in January. I know that's not true. Inside. Inside. Inside it is. Yeah, yeah inside. Yeah. Well, as I'm inside, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, everything's covered there from the Radisson to the Convention Center. You, you, don't, need, you don't need to go outside. a little outside. walkway. You nice. never have to go okay. out in the snow, you know. So. Excellent. Well, I'll yeah. definitely put it on my, uh, my calendar. Excellent. Uh, one of the things we talked about going back to the 1% and some of the things. So uh, a couple of weeks from now, we're going to have uh, Neogen is going to be on the show with us. And they have developed a product uh, called the Raptor. And it's uh, meant for uh, on farm, easy, quick uh, results for THC so that mm -hmm. farmers can then monitor that uh, throughout the growing season. So they know when they're getting close and they got a call to get the test done and have the state come out and do their tests. But uh, again, a great new uh, tool invention that they've come up with to, to make that um, very affordable and uh, reliable so farmers don't have that problem of going over. They can at least know when to when to cut that problem off. So, yeah, yeah that's super important. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got to take all the precautionary precautions necessary to protect the farmer, for sure. Yeah, it's a big investment. Yeah. Yes, and we all know the story, and I know we have some you know, some members that, have had that problem last year had to destroy the crop beautiful crop but it was hot so they had to destroy it so that's such a bummer you know um one of the things that um it's like it's such a waste you know mm -hmm. that that is where the one percent would come in handy of like okay well we can't well one thing actually i i like to would throw out there for the one percent is you know okay so it goes over 0.3 you can't sell in the commercial market let's at least research it you know, create a research program so that we can put that into some sort of viable market without having to just compost it. Um, I mean, there's ways of turning it into, um, into like biochar. Um, that could be a possibility for it. But why not, you know, take the floral material and actually research it? You know, what, what, what do terpenes change? Do the cannabinoids ratios change? At what point? What impact does, does it might have? Mm -hmm. um, or will it have? That was weird sentence. <laughs> well, uh, another possibility is if it's hot, you could turn it into in construction materials like hempcrete because it's not for human mm -hmm. consumption anyway. So what's the difference, right? You yeah. know, so. right? Yeah, we need more remediation paths for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's yeah, you 
again, there's a lot to be done in this industry. Patience, <laughs> right? Patience. Yep. <laughs> Patience is the key, even though it feels urgent. <laughs> yeah, Dave didn't point out that behind him is his hemp wood wall. You mm-hmm. didn't mention yeah. that, Dave. Oh, yeah. From, I love from it. our yeah. friends in Kentucky, Greg Wilson, I'm sure, is there today. Yep, and, he is. And he, the, his booth's right across from mine. Yeah, yes, cool. and, and he also has time. some, I'm going to shill for him a little bit. He also has some hemp products behind him, right, Dave? This is Himalayan hemp made by artesian women in Nepal, India. Ooh, wow. Uh, this is some hemp uh, fabric that was uh, made by my cousin. The, he didn't make the fabric. He made the apron. It's a hemp okay. apron. Cool. And then uh, we're manufacturing Frisbees. We're, uh, and this is, this is uh, going great guns. We're private labeling Frisbees because Frisbees oh. are the way. Oh, I like that. We should talk offline about that. Love to talk to you about that. Yeah, then I feel like they go well with our Hemp Mellow oh. brand. Little yeah, beach, we're, we're beach we're frisbee. Going. Yeah, exactly. It'd be pretty. Like you know, send me your logo and I'll send you a picture of a uh, frisbee with your logo on it. Okay. The, yeah, I will. Teaser. Yeah, that'll be the teaser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, we have some uh, hempers, hemp seed oil frisbees on the way. Wait for them. Well, hopefully, what, what is that? The, is, does it have the emperor wearing the emperor hat as well, or it, what? It, it, yeah, it it's, a, it's an actual emperor mm-hmm. oh, okay. with the uh, crown and everything. And oh, I see. Pretty Got cool. It. Wow. The crown is made out of hemp leaves, though. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. and you'll have to stick around for the end of the show. Then you'll see the emperor himself in action. <laughs> You won't see the hat today, and that, that really is unfortunate. Oh, that's right. You don't have it. Yeah. I said when I left the house last night, or when I was packing, I said, I got to throw the hat in there, and I forgot. So, yeah. uh, I think so, I, uh, the, no, oh, sorry, go ahead. You're going to be at the, uh, uh, at the Southern Hemp Expo in Raleigh. My plan as of now, I, I need to, um, I need to look at flights and figure out if I'm going to drive or fly or, the logistical side of life. Where, where um, do you call home besides Michigan? Uh, Kentucky. Kentucky. I'll, oh, I'll be coming from Michigan, actually. So it's a little bit further. <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm driving. I have room. If you need a ride, let me know. Okay. But I might, yeah. I might go to Indiana first. For there's a farm event. Amy's. Yeah. Okay. I haven't decided. That's, that's yep. the fiber and field day that they're having. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Excellent. Is uh, I think I have actually that you said that Nepalese backpack in the back. Yeah. Um, I think I have a clutch actually that was made by them. Um, this is from Peshaw. I... Okay. I don't remember the brand name. I met him at the HIA uh, Hemp Industries Association conference in LA like, a couple years ago. And he was he was hand making them in Nepal, and I brought some over to have him looked at. And I, he had this little clutch, and I basically was like, "How much for the clutch? I have to have that." <laughs> he was like, "No, no, this is my sample." I'm like, "I don't care. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Give it to me. Here you go." Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what so I've had a few comments where, um, you know, even a purse, you know, just cut this mm-hmm. thing off at, at this oh, level. Yeah. And that's what um, I think I have it right here. I use it every day, so it's kind of falling apart, which I'm a little upset about. But it's actually Hemp Lab. It might not be the same company. Oop. Oh, my blur's kind of. Oh, not yeah, your blur's this. getting in the way. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like a little yeah. really nice. Uh-huh. Perfect. You know, it's got like a little fabric on the inside with pockets. And I could I love carry that thing. like a money I bag. another one. Mm-hmm. You could, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Immerse. My cousin work, uh, designs for Coach in the man, men's handbag. Oh uh, man! Division. So yeah, he's got. Some, well, we got to get them on the hemp train. Uh, yes. I hear there's going to be some uh, some U.S. made hemp fabric coming into the woodwork here soon. Um, U.S. That, grown, U.S. spun. Is that in North Carolina? Because I'm hearing things all over the place, but uh. There's, there's some stuff coming out of Colorado and then they're having to like work with other, um, they've been working on building out the supply chain. I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about it, so I can't really give you more information. Yeah, than that. That's, no, that's, um, that's, let's not do that some here. Cool stuff brewing. For I sure. know it's so, it's so exciting yeah. to hear. And, and a lot of people have been quiet because they don't want the distraction. Right. So mm-hmm. 
we're going to have some surprises coming and uh and there's big investment yeah. coming this is a real deal it, it's a great opportunity to get involved in the hemp space you know there's a lot of and from durable goods to to uh processing to insulation i mean we have all these things that can come out of this little plant you know so mm -hmm. get involved it's cool yeah like the hemp everybody's wood, I mean, energy oh yeah for sure for sure we need people to to talk about hemp not just cbd um you know that's really been lost yeah. in the last um six seven years of, of working on this and um, you know, in the end of the day, it's going to be the, the fiber that really brings the farmer, the farming to life, brings the, um, you know, the, the It'll uh, scale. industry yeah, to scale. And, and mm -hmm. but we need to be careful with it simultaneously, because you look at corn and soy. Yeah, you know, don't want those safe, were, <laughs> yeah, we know, we know how not to do it. So let's, right. let's not recreate the wheel. Let's do it right. You know, we got one. Well, chance that's why we this. need we need all this regional processing because we don't all the, want mm -hmm. all those big transportation expenses. So Blaine, oh yeah, Blaine's doing yeoman's work. He's got his oil press up and running, uh, working on a project for hemp hearts. I mean, so we'll have all that right here in Michigan mm -hmm. soon if you can be patient. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's it's coming. I know it's it's hard to to tell everybody everything we're learning every day on a daily basis and what we're seeing happen go on. So um, it's just exciting to see where we're all Very going. Exciting. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. It's happening. Yeah. Talking about that, because we're talking about the power of hemp, right, Dave? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the power of hemp, talk about the power of hemp is the uh, motto for the 2022 Midwest iHemp Expo that'll be held January 21st and 22nd. Now, what's a special added on to this is on the 20th, we're going to be having um, <clears throat> training on the U.S. Hemp Authority's uh, seal. So for processors, for farmers that need to get that, need to get that uh, certification, we're going to be able to provide that training uh, the day before the expo. So it'll be on the 20th at the Radisson. So also on the 25th of this month, uh, we're going to have the webinars with uh, food chain ID, uh, one at noon and one at seven o'clock, just to kind of go over what it's about, what you're gonna need to look for in the future. We already know that it's coming down the road with the marijuana side because now they've got to have this uh, GMP and good handling practices certification. So it's coming. Uh, we're trying to get the word out there ahead of time and be able to provide that training for you. So you'll be able to be ready when that comes down the line. So, you know. Marking my calendar. All right. 21st and 22nd? 21st, 22nd. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe, maybe Better might... be 70 degrees in that, in that room. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah Blame guarantees it. You know, all your money back, right? So, um, yeah, absolutely. Yes, I will. Got to get some, like, UV lighting, you mm -hmm. know? Maybe we'll get, we'll get the suntan boost or something going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah the Radisson is... Uh, uh, made a great price uh, for the rooms. Uh, so that'll, again, Dave, like Dave said, we're going to have all that information up and on the site uh, very shortly. We're just uh, got a few uh, little details we got to get. And then we got the Hempies Awards, which we're really excited about. This is the second one uh, that we're having. Um, and these are the categories are food products, we're going to have photo contests, personal care products. So Amy, that's where a lot of your stuff will probably come into. Uh, Dave, do you have your award on your desk still? I do. Yeah, I mean, I'm chilling for Dave today. So, uh, great. This is the uh, oh, my, nice. uh, protein balls. So, what that is, that's actually wood from Greg's um, making hemp wood down there. And then a mm -hmm. local guy close to the where the, where the plant is, uh, Squire, um, did the turning of it. So, those are actually hemp wood bowls, is what those are. So way cool. Cool. So we decided what this year is going to be, but it's going to be a hemp product of some kind for sure. That's what we're trying to. What so we do for the award? So uh, innovations, textiles, miscellaneous, uh, and then this year we're actually going to be able to have a really nice fun party. Um, the tickets are going to be limited just because of the size that we have for the room to have the dinners for everybody. Probably going to be about three hundred people is all we can have in there. But we're going to try to have some music and just have a fun time that we haven't have been able to do in the last couple of years. So certainly mark your date for that one for sure. That's going to be Friday night, 
is when that will be the opening night of the uh, of the expo. So, how do I uh, submit a product? Um, you'll so be how able... do I submit in general? Yep. Go so, to MidwestIHempExpo.com. We'll have that all set up by this weekend. Cool. Yep. You can see how you can see from that picture how sunny everything is, and yeah, that, that you know that's Michigan. You know, so what can I say? Yeah, it is a beautiful state. People often, I think, overlook it because they just think of like Detroit or Flint water crisis or something. It's like, oh, little do you know? <laughs> right. It's kind of like yeah. Kentucky is a similar. <laughs> don't tell everybody. We got it. the traffic's bad. Yeah, enough. it's horrible. No, you don't want to go. There. <laughs> don't go to Michigan or Kentucky. They're awful places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the people there are just ugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amy, thanks for being on the show today. What a fun. Uh, a lot of fun. A lot of good. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and we'll definitely uh, look forward to seeing you, hopefully in another month, uh, and. Uh, and we'll share some information there and have a good time again down there in Raleigh at the Southern Hemp Expo. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, so I want to remind everybody, too, on the website, uh, Dave, maybe you can take us to the classified section. Um, I want everybody to know that this is a great way to look for uh, supplies, materials, equipment, uh, really cheap. We've made it. It's five bucks, folks, to put a little ad up on there. And um, so I just want to let everybody know the, the latest one we've had come on there has been uh, from Sutton Weed Farm, uh, J.C. Uh, Sutton. Um, there it is, yeah, the Python Trimmer. Uh, that's the one. Uh, they only used that a couple of times last year. Uh, it's way too big for their operation. So they're looking to sell that. Uh, best uh, reasonable offer is what they're going to take on that. So if you're looking for a trimmer, uh, this might be a way to get a pretty inexpensive one to help with your operation there. But many things are on here. Uh, we've got the hemp harvesters on there. Uh, looks like we've got a four station wet bucker. Uh, I know that uh, or, um, we've got, oh, my, my grain seeds out on there. We'll get that on there. So just a lot of ways to, uh, to get the word out. Again, we've made it, uh, again, inexpensive, five bucks, and you get to put your ad up on there. So great way to get the word out on that. So requests for help from researchers at the University of Wisconsin, they are looking for um, locations uh, where there is ditchweed. What they're looking for is feral hemp. So they want to do studies on that. And they will keep everybody's information and your private stash location secret. They will not be sharing that information with anybody. But the summary of the research is the Midwest farmers struggle to decrease revenue resulting from globalization and diversifying agriculture, and however, the lack of institutional research over the past seven years has left hemp farmers with relatively little foundational agronomic knowledge and poorly uh, adapted cultivars. So they're looking to find some of these feral hemp out there that have some great characteristics that they'll be able to breed in uh, as we go forward with this. And uh, so they're asking for the public's help in locating population of feral hemp to include in their study. You can share information about the feral hemp uh, with them in two ways, either via iNaturalist, a free crowdsourcing nature application available through an application on the mobile device, uh, or they can send the information directly to them versus the U.S. Postal Service. And we'll get this information up there. Now, if you have any questions. I can post that to the website. So we can just go to ihempmichigan.com and I'll, it'll be in the news. We'll have all of that information on there for you. So. All right, so that was that one on there. Annie, you might want to stick around just for a minute. Are you going to do the recipe, Blaine? I am. That's we're going right to that. I know one. Annie needs to get back to the show, so we understand that. Thank you, Annie. Whatever works. Okay. Appreciate you. So yeah, thank you guys. This, this week's show. I'm sorry I don't have my little hat to put on, but it's a healthy peach crisp with oat topping and pecans. Uh, prep time's pretty good on this. It's about 15 minutes. The cook time's 40, so it's about 55 minutes. Uh, we'll have this information up on the website, but uh, Dave, can you, you got the, you got it. Oh, or, did you want me to share the link? Okay. Yeah, we got it. We got to bring it up there. Uh, they, they talk about, you need about five cups of peaches, uh, uh, sugar, uh, all-purpose flour, cinnamon, um, half a cup of oats, some brown sugar, some flaxseed. The thing that I always like to put in there is hemp hearts, which they have listed on here. That's the whole purpose of this for the healthiness. 
Um, instructions are pretty simple. Anyway, you make a kind of a, there you go, there we go. Doesn't that look yummy? Just looks yummy. And uh, so the directions on there, how to make it. I like simple things and I like good things. And this one is a healthy peach crisp with oat topping and pecans. Ooh. That is today's wonderful recipe. Since we're coming into the peach season now, we always try to keep things relevant as we're moving through the different seasons. So, all right. And, and Becky's going to put this in the recipe section. He is. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. So, you'll be able to, if you go to ihempmichigan.com, uh, hemp recipe is right there at the top. There you go. Excellent. All right. Anybody got anything else for the good of the cause? Nope. Well, sir, it's a beautiful day out go make something fun happen that's okay. it all right well, everybody thanks so much for joining us next week dave who do we have on next week we have thank you for putting me on the spot we have uh, <laughs> a, a new <laughs> so we, we had, i can't remember hemp synergistics uh ron uh I, i'm someone i met recently and they have, they're out of pennsylvania they have some that's why I was asking Annie about those questions. Is it like a processing thing or what? Because they have a, a better widget, a better way to process and to capsulize the uh, the hemp products. And and it's some, you know, we're going to geek out on some science. It's going to be way over my head, but you know, I'm sure some of it will absorb. And uh, so hemp synergic sneaks out of uh, Pennsylvania will be on next week. Well, I'll be right with you there, Dave. Because uh... yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I love, you know, I, I could talk to Annie about this stuff forever. She's a, a sharp cookie. Yes, she is. Yeah. Absolutely, she is. So. Good, good job. All right, All right well, you guys, make it a great week. And I want to give a shout out to uh, Ready to Grow here and letting us uh, let me broadcast from down here today. And uh, guys, we'll see you in the near future. All right. Have a hempy day, right? Peace and love. All right. Thanks, everybody. Yeah.